Hi everyone, it's Cindy with Just Girl Vegas. How are you? Happy, it's my Sunday and I thought I would put um, this picture up. Uh, we got it a, f uh, a few months ago, sometime earlier this year. And uh, my husband got it at an auction. I saw it and I said, um, I'd like him to get that for me. And um, uh, he did. My husband got it for me. I don't, I don't, I think it was um, probably like uh, $100 or less, you know, with the auction fee and the tax and, and everything. So maybe, maybe, maybe $80 or something um, with everything. But, um, I like it, and I wanted to tell you about it, and, um, I'm kind of babbling today, but, <laughs> anyways, when I was a child, um, I remember going to Baptist Church, and, um, I remember this image, and it's called, it's called, it's, it, the painter, the artist is called Warner Salmons, and it's called the Head of Christ, and it was, um, the portrait first appeared in 1940. But it originally started as a charcoal. And actually, you, you all can't really see it. But it does say, I'm going to read it to you. It says, Warner Salmon, 1940, copyright 1941, Litho in United States. So I know this has to be pretty old, this print. It has a tiny bit of, um, and I don't want to touch it, but it's got a couple little scratches. Um... And, uh, but I just thought I would, I would share this with everyone today and I hope and pray my, my prayer for y'all is that it gives you some peace today. If you watch this video, because Jesus is the Prince of Peace and Jesus can fix anything, um, that that's a problem in your life and, and will give you, he's the bread of life. He's living water from heaven. Um, and, um, this was, this was something nice. I saw, um, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done, only what's done for Christ will last. For me to live is Christ. And, um, and that's a Bible verse, for me to live is Christ. I think that's the Apostle Paul, for me to live is Christ. I think that's, a, that's yeah, I think that's the Apostle Paul wrote that. Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For to me living means living for Christ and dying is even better. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Okay, they're repeating it. Um, uh, let's see what it, how it sounds in the New King James. Um, so yeah, it's definitely Philippians 1.21. I didn't know if maybe there was another... Um, you know, maybe a similar verse. Sometimes there's verses that are similar in the Bible. Um, but okay. Okay, and this is saying, what did the Apostle Paul mean when he wrote that? When Paul wrote the book of Philippians, he was in prison. Um, at the beginning of the book, he grieves the church, the Philippian church. He expresses how much he prays and yearns for them. Yeah, and if you all recall, um, the Apostle Paul was very learned. I mean, he he was um, he he grew up in the in the Jewish faith. He knew the ins and outs. He knew how to dot every i and cross every t. Um, but he had an encounter with Jesus, and um, he then became you know a follower of Christ. Um, and then he says, uh, this is saying, Paul's only care is that the gospel is being shared. Um, by the time Paul was writing his letter to the Philippians, he already experienced great persecution and suffering for the sake of Christ. Um, he's been beaten with rods, shipwrecked three times. Remember, everyone had a, like, they, their modes of transportation back then was walking, uh, horses, riding horses, maybe some kind of carts donkeys or ships you know we didn't they didn't have you know cars or bikes or planes or anything like that they had a they had to use animal power or foot power you know um so he's been shipwrecked three times in prison multiple times he's had uh, betrayals cold hunger etc um 
but it says Paul's been faithful to obey God and present his body as a living sacrifice for the sake of Christ multiple times. He knew that whether in life or in death, he would bring glory and honor to God. It says this is why when he gets to, uh, when he writes this verse, it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And um, he knew that God would receive honor through his death. And then also that his physical death would be gained for him because it would mean his earthly days were finally finished and he could be with Jesus forever and eternity. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, um, getting back to all that, um, when I was a child, I remember the church we attended, there was a, there was a picture like this in the corridor. Um, and I remember seeing it and contemplating it as a child that was, you know, four or five, six years old or something, just kind of looking at that picture that, and, and I guess, I guess someone told me that that, that's what, you know, that was Jesus or somehow, you know, it's a representation of Jesus. Um, so anyways, it's been a while since I'd seen this, 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 this picture of Jesus um, my husband was raised Catholic, um, and as you know, if, if any of you all go to Catholic Mass or church, you know that they, they have a lot of icons and, and artwork, and I just love that about the Catholic Church. I love seeing the depictions of, of Jesus and the Twelve Disciples and Mary and Joseph, and just, I, I, I personally love that. Now, I was raised Baptist, and, um, you know, uh, typically you'll, you might see a cross inside the church. Um, you'll definitely see it like up on the building on the exterior. You might see one inside somewhere. You might see some, some prints or posters, but not too much of the, you know, st statue type things. Um, but, um, uh, anyways, I know my mom, where my mom and dad got married, um, that country church, have, has lots of beautiful stained glass. And some of the Catholic churches have the stained glass, as do other churches around the world. They have beautiful stained glass um, depictions of, of scenes out of the Bible. And um, I just, I personally, I just love it. I love art anyways, and I love going to the museums and, and seeing art. So for me to see religious art, it's just like a whole nother level for me. And, um, uh, so I just wanted to show you the head of, and so this painting is called the head of Christ, and here it is, and I'm going to keep it up for a while. I don't, I don't know. I'll probably change it around um, because I have some other stuff I want to share with with people that may watch this channel. Um, but it's a beautiful, and it looks, and it looks, it looks pretty old. The the painting, the the, the lithograph, um, and so this person's from Chicago that that painted it. And it says, it says that he first did a, a, a charcoal um, um, in 1924, and it was called the Son of Man. And it was so popular that they asked him to paint it as an oil painting, to, you know, to kind of mass produce. And that's what it ended up looking like, the oil painting. And that it, it has yellow and brown hues. Um... And that, you know, they printed it a lot on postcards and on pocket cards. And so soldiers that went to World War II would have these cards with picture of Jesus on them. And with maybe a Bible verse or something on it. See? Oh, so, so this is what uh, they're thinking the Son of Man looked like. Something like this picture. Son of Man, 1924. Son of Man, 1935. Uh, Son of Man, 1937, for every high priest taken from a man, um, among men is ordained for men in the things that pertain um, to God. Hebrews, I guess that's it. See the halo. I think he had drawn it once with a halo. And here it is again, um, Head of Christ, 1962. Now, now he, he passes away in 1968, so... Um, it looks like this might have been signed 
looks like so this um, um, I'm not sure if he painted it again then I'm not I'm not really sure but I mean it has these different years so I'm assuming he he reproduced the work and it says that he repro reproduced several things um, Christ at the heart store knocking I had a mirror like this with this art on it it was so beautiful and then it broke um, part of it broke and I don't know quite what happened to it. We have a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, and look at this, the Good Shepherd. This, I love this, the Lord is my shepherd. I heard a good, a good message about that today on church. Oh, and so this other art that we have, that's an, that's actually an original oil painting, and it's very large, is this. I have this, and it says it was painted in 1943 or 44, I, I believe, by a woman. And um, it's it's large, so I'll have to push the bookcases apart um, and and hang that for you all. But um, so the majority of these paintings, um, they were painted around World War II. You know, times that were um, the first the first drawing though. This was before World War II started. Um, might have been, uh, I'm not sure of the years of World War I. But what I find interesting about all this, uh, this person says the thing, same thing. He remembers seeing it at a Baptist church Sunday school. So I saw it, I saw it at a Baptist church hallway corridor by Sunday school by the bathrooms and whatnot. And they might have hung it in each of the bathrooms even and had it in a hallway. You know, it was a very popular art and I haven't seen it in a long time you know I haven't I hadn't seen it and then when when my husband said do you like this and I said yes absolutely and um and we got it and uh you know I'm happy we did I'm happy we did and um yeah and this person says my taste in sacred art have certainly changed in 50 years but the iconic power of the head of Christ, this picture, still resonates for me. Um, and yeah, it's true. It, there's there's something um, very um, compelling about this picture. You know, it's it's very, see, print reproduction on cardboard. Head of Christ, Warner Salmon. Um, he did the oil in 1940, but he did the original art in 19, I think they said 1924. So that would have been a few years before my, my uh, father was born. Yeah, yeah, he did it for the February 1924 edition of Covenant Companion. Um, um, and so I just want to read you this last paragraph about it. Um, and um, it says, it says, as befits a true icon, the story of how Solomon created his famous image has supernatural elements. Okay, it says he's a Chicago-based commercial artist and a committed Christian. Solomon was working on a new portrait of Jesus for the February 1924 edition. So maybe he was working on it, maybe, maybe December, January, maybe, maybe. Um... Maybe I'm. I mean, I'm not sure, but usually, if you're trying to get something for print for the February edition, maybe you're you're working on it a month or two before. Maybe, maybe I. You know. Um. So um. So with a deadline looming the very next day, so like this guy didn't have the art done. He went to bed. He could not come up with the image, so he went to sleep. Uh, and he went to bed in despair, it says. He awoke in the early hours of the morning to see a vision of Christ, which would serve as a prototype for the charcoal drawing, which is called the Son of Man. I mean, isn't that incredible? So, everybody, if you have problems or issues or work issues or family issues or, or college issues or just life issues, go to bed. Leave, pray, pray to God and go to bed. Um... Because I've heard this many, many times from people that they just, they just, they just slept on it. They, 
They let their mind work it out. They let their spirit work it out. They let God come to them, you know. Um, so anyways, it says, He woke up in the early hours of the morning to see a vision of Christ, and uh, which would serve as the prototype for the charcoal drawing. And um, they said that skeptics are quick to point out the, the remarkable similarity of this sketch to the 1892 painting by this guy, Friend of the Lowly. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Okay, it looks a little similar, but I... It's similar. Yes, it's similar. It's definitely similar, but um, I still think... Um, I believe this person had a vision. I believe both these people had a vision, is what I believe. I believe both artists, that God touched them in some way to um, enlighten them, you know, as to what to paint or draw. We also have that girl that paints, um, the girl that paints the, the art of Jesus. Yeah, let's see if we can find that. Yeah, I think it's her. I think it's this girl. I believe it's her. Um, yeah, she's got that painting, Prince of Peace. Um, let me see. Yeah. Yeah, she's been painting it since she is four years old. She's been painting her picture of Jesus Christ since she's four years old. Let's see. Her Prince of Peace painting. I guess, yeah, here it is. She recovered the work. Yeah, the piece disappeared, mistakenly sold, was kept out of the public eye for two decades. Wow. She got it back. So she's had this vision of Jesus in her mind since she was four years old. She says, um, it's a surreal story to me, I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> My family was very, very poor. We grew up in an environment that was nurturing and caring. Everything around us was beautiful. I don't belong to any religions. I really belong to God. It took her, it took her more than 40 hours for the 8-year-old Kramerick to finish the painting that's nearly twice her size. Thousands of copies have been sold around the world. Now, years and hundreds of notable paintings later, she told us Prince of Peace is still her most recognized work. The original is now returning to view after it was taken by an agent and sold by mistake. It spent years in the dark. It was wrapped up underneath the stairs for many years. It was recently recovered by her family and sold to a private collector for 850000 It's not the sale that's putting a smile on Kramerick's face. It's the timely gift of light. It was a Chris, That was a Christmas present to me. It was amazing to me to be able to see into this light again after so many years. Love is so powerful. It will show up on time to people who need it most. So she has a similar, a similar picture as well. Of Jesus. Yeah, just beautiful. What a beautiful picture. I mean, and she painted it when she was eight years old. Age eight, she painted this picture. Age eight. Akiani, age eight. So she, she was given a vision. Just beautiful. All right, so, um, with all that said, um, again, I hope you all have a, um, a really great week, and um, I hope you enjoy looking at that. I'm going to keep it up for a while, and um, it said that millions of pocket-sized re pocket reproductions of the image were distributed by the Salvation Army and the YMCA to American soldiers in World War II. Um, Huh. 
He would redraw this special portrait at least 500 times before live audiences in evangelistic chalk talks around the country. And they made a postcard. Um, interesting. Interesting. Nice. It's just beautiful. So beautiful. And it almost looks like the eyes are green after seeing uh, the Prince of Peace art from the girl. Solomon, 1962. He did this a few years before I was born. Just beautiful. It's just beautiful, everyone. Yeah, I need to save this image. I'll put it on my thing. Solomon, Head of Christ, 1962. Hopefully I spelled it, Solomon, Head of Christ. Let's make sure that's what it's called. Yep, Head of Christ. Okay, now, getting back to my chess. Um, I played a game. I did win. And I'm going to do a quick review of it. This is the game I just played today. Um, I'll just show you that I just played it. Let's see what my win-loss is lately. Um, so I did win it. I lost this match a few minutes ago. I lost this match about an hour ago. Hour and a half ago, maybe. Um, struggling a little bit. These are my last five matches. That was a draw. Uh, I ran out of time. I would have won, but I ran out of time. I lost this match. I won this match. Lost this match. Won this match. Um, and my opponent just resigned on this one. But we'll go into it really quick. I earned 10 rating points. I'm up to 860. Got to get back over 900. Yeah, I want to get back over 900 the next couple days. If I can. You know, it'd be nice. I had one great move. No mistakes, no blunders. I tend to be winning my matches when I'm not having mistakes or blunders. Especially if my opponent has some. It says intense, nice win, you were never in trouble. So we'll just start it out. Yeah, I should have brought the knight up for the four knights, but we're, we're the opening is Petros defense three knights. Yeah, I didn't want to take this knight because the queen was just going to come get me. All right, oh, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of want to hold on, okay? Hold on. I want to do this one second. Just try this for a second. And I'll, I promise I'll get back into the review. Um, let's do like what it's said to do. Okay, so it's going to castle. Okay. So if we take, what happens? I don't think the queen will take. Okay, so now this is attacking... Um, attacking my queen where to go what to do huh what do you do here I mean for instance this queen is guarding this right If I move this piece, the knight's going to take my queen. And if I move here, the knight's going to take my queen. I mean, I don't know why it wanted me to do this. Honestly, why would it have me do this? I don't have any way to attack um, this queen. to do here.
queen to b4 is best. Nice. Then you go there. Oh, oh, I'm in check. Yikes. Yikes. That's a blunder. Okay, so I wasn't supposed to do that. Um... That's a blunder too. Maybe here. Wow, what what do you even do here? What do you do here? lose this, but I guess the knight, the rook would take it back. Um, hmm. Saying c5 was best. So that's best. Hmm. up here. Yeah, I don't know how I can beat that. Hmm. How do you beat that? some pressure on right here.
go there and guard this. Hmm. bad. Too bad. It says I have an advantage, but I don't, oh no, now it doesn't. Hmm. Well, I think you have to move this. Oh, now it's going to get both. Knight to b4 was best. Knight to b4. This was, oh, guarding this. Guarding it right there. Okay. Guarding it. Okay. Huh. be a mistake. Yeah, didn't like that. B5. Alright, well I don't really know what to do. Hard. This puzzle's hard. I could go there. hard. Alright, enough of that. I don't know if I even got anything out of that. Let me finish this. Yeah, that was my great move. Okay, so there, here's where it got tricky, right? So this thing was able to come here and fork my fork my queen and my knight, right, which I saw, so I just, um, so it came down to fork, right, so I just went ahead and I took the queen, you know, and I know it's going to take, if it takes my knight, I'm just going to take back with the rook, if it takes the queen, which is most likely what it's going to do, I'm going to take back with the other rook, so, but I just wanted to make sure I got the queen, Right, so look, I attacked the queen, it came down at four, and I did that, and I did that, and then it's game over. Um, I want to go back a couple moves, though, um, and um, I want to do this move right here. Let's uh, practice. Let's try a couple moves against 32, see if I can do anything. Um, been wearing the glasses a little too much lately. Um, I'm going to turn off the light because the glare is really, really hard on my eyes. So let me do that. Hmm. Hold on, I want to get my light, my, my pair that's not so uh, strong. Hold on.
dogs are being nice and quiet. Oh, how'd you pet away? Okay. So I want to just, okay, so it moved over. Let's see, did, did White ever castle this game? No, White never castled. I castled, Black castled on move five. Okay, so. So look, this is. <clears throat> I think I want to go here. All right, I didn't move that one too bad. Um, said knight to d7 is best. This is tough. Yeah, if we jump here and here, we can attack. Does that change anything? What happens if we do that? Okay, it went that way now. What happens if I go there? Oh, jeez. Attacking my queen now. Um, I'm not just doing that. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Pretty hard against thirty two. try to finish it based on the board that I had when the game was over when my opponent resigned. Okay. I think it's better to put my king the king in check. Um and then just start developing these pieces. Get the pieces out. Maybe go here. Okay. And then get these uh, connected. there and see if the rook would come down. So if that goes there, how do I get, if I bring the knight to here, to here, to here, that's a check. Um, of course this is in the way. How do you get this out of the way? up here too. Okay. Maybe take that. Do that. Okay. 
do this. This is kind of bad now. Yeah, I have nowhere to... Yeah, huh. This is a little bit of a predicament now. This end game. Come here, G. You're laying down there. Mommy wants to see you. Oh, I want to see you. I miss you. My dog's down there. He's older, so he sleeps a lot. When he was young, all he ever did was uh, chase the ball. I guess I had to find it in my pictures. I need to put a photo of him up so you all can see him. Um, yeah, I feel like I just, uh, Okay. Yeah. See this. Yeah, I'm like in a really bad spot now. I need to reset this. I need to reset this. Let's try it again. Let's try to work on it some more. Let's guard this pawn. Yeah, definitely want to get um, this out. Alright, so the rooks are now connected. So that's something good. King's on a dark square. I only have a light square bishop left. Um, yeah, these are, these three pawns are pretty immovable right here. So my pony only has rooks left. Um, what if I did this? What's it think of that, blocking that pawn in? Alright, it says knight to e7 is best. e7, oh, up here. Hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Go there. Go there. Okay. Hey, I wanted to get up here and get this piece. Well. I go there, that's check. Six pawns. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't help much. Just gonna take this. If I do this. Rooks just coming around, getting pawns. Um, do that. 
there. Yeah, it's attacking mine. Attacking my bishop. there, huh? Okay, making a little progress. Um, Wow. I have to go this way. Could go on that long diagonal. this night. Well, that's a check. Okay, if it tries to come that way. on a dark square. Wow. Oh, jeez. Wow.
regarding that. can't take that. Oh, you're going to take... Jeez. Uh, 32. Good old 32. 32 is hard to beat. Shoot. Huh. Let's try it again. Try it again. So I have five pawns against six. I really don't want to give up my rook yet. Yeah, the predicament I have is that, see that? And then if I go there, I thought it was just going to drop down. right there.
Yeah, it just doesn't let you. No, you can never get up. Yeah. Wow, that's hard. It's hard playing 32. Uh, anyways, I won the game um, um, against a normal opponent. Let's see how it would go against... Uh, let's change, oh, let me show you how you change the bot. Um, I don't need the bot. I would rather do an engine setting. Let's do a setting 1200. Let's see if it's winnable at all. I mean, I, I think maybe I should take, but... Um, Knight to c6 is best. Okay. Yeah, it keeps wanting me to get that knight out there. Um. Oh, that's going to try to take that. I don't know why it let me do that. That's crazy. I guess that's because it's 1200. Right? You know, get to the top of that chain. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to get surprised. So I need an escape square. Go there. Which one to defend? So I think I have to move um, the knight out of the way. I like this move. Go there. Go there. Yeah, I wanted to go up here. Attack that way. Uh, what to do? What to do? Well, that's a check. That's kind of nice. Okay, I like that. Um, okay, black to move right and black. Yeah, so just going here. Checkmate. 1200, see? But that 3200, man, it just, it, it, it gives you head pain. Trying to, trying to practice against it. 
All right, enough of that. Let's do a couple puzzles. Um, do a couple puzzles before the night's over. Um, so the knight's attacking my king, my queen, my white queen. It's white to move. Okay, that's a three-way fork. I like that. I think you want to just take the queen and take this. But you'll lose your knight. Do you want to take that? Or move out of the way? Normally it's just... Uh, nah. It said move out of the way. Where would you move? Where would you move this night? Yeah, this is interesting. I'll maybe just take with uh, the king. No? Okay. Definitely interesting then. I mean, why would I go here? I'm just going to get... Wow. Obviously, I'm not seeing something. It's obvious. Alright, I have no idea on this. Oh, the bishop. Yeah, why wouldn't you take the bishop? Yeah, I think I'm tired. I'll have to end the video because I'm, I'm, I'm rather tired. Um, so you go there, then you take the queen. Then that takes, then you take the bishop, then that takes, then you take that, and you at least you have a defender for the king. Let's try one. That was 1401, by the way. Um, yeah, if I want to get any better, I think I have to start getting in at least, let's say, 40 puzzles a day. I haven't been doing very many at all the last 30 days. I haven't been doing enough. I think the first week of the last 30 days, I, I was doing some puzzles pretty good, but not anymore. That's a check, take. Um, I would take this. Jeez. So is this really a checkmate right here? I mean, the queen's just going to get it. Really? Come on. This might be it. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's an important concept, everyone. So the queen's defending there. The rook's defending there. All right. The rook isn't so much of a, a, a problem. It's this queen. It's this queen and the king. But if you bring the queen here, you put the king in check, and he can't go here, he can't go here, he can't go there. And he can't go there either because of the rook. So let's try that one more time. Check. Take. Guarded by the queen. And instead of going up all the way or down, we just bring it to here. And that is really important, everybody. Because I know I lost a match like that before. <clears throat> I mean... I mean, you're always thinking you need your pieces, like, stacked, but this is showing you that this is covering all of this, this is covering all of that, and this, you know. It's a checkmate, and nothing can stop it. So that's, that's pr pretty darn cool. All right, that's rated 1230. Try one more. Um...
Excuse me. Yeah, this one's tricky too. This one is tricky as well. You want to get that queen in there. But I'm thinking it would probably just move down. I don't even know on this puzzle. Wow. Could take that. Can't take this. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it wrong again. The other thing I'm thinking about is attacking there, but why wouldn't it just come down and put me in check? I'm already like on this line, basically. I mean, I could go here, attack the queen there. It's going to have to end up there. I don't even know. I'm stumped. I mean, sometimes when you're in doubt, it's best to just, you know, take a couple pieces. There's definitely some kind of advantage having this thing controlling this. But I sure don't see it. I don't know how you get past this piece here. Blocking you. I think I think what it is is you push this up, this comes down, you go there. Yeah. Yep. Then you go here. Ooh, I'm amazed I got that right. I finally saw it after a few minutes. Um. Here. Here. Check. Come in there, and then let's see how it ends. Okay. Wow, still hard. Still kind of hard. this up. Alright, let me go up. What happens here? This thing's trying to promote. Okay, good. 
good. We got it right. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. Oh, that um, U.S. Chess Championships. Let me show you where we're at on that. Fabi's having a great chess tournament. U.S. Chess Championships. Otherwise, we got to go to St. Louis Chess. And Jennifer Yu, I Chess Player of the Week. Favorite to take home the nice. This beautiful picture of her. Alright, Susan Polgar talking about chess. Yeah. Let me retweet that. Very pretty smile. Okay, um... So this is the standings. I'm glad she's showing the men and the women. How nice. Nice. That's good. See if we can make it bigger. So here's the women. Uh, these two are tied for first. Megan Lee, Arena Crush. Jennifer Hughes in third. She's right behind them. Um, Alice Lee, I believe she's the young girl. Um, Rochelle Wu. All right, there's the top 14 right there, everybody. Three-way tie for 10th, four-way tie for 6th um, through 9. There's a tie for 4th and 5th. Yeah, a lot of ties in chess. So, put a heart there. Um, I want to retweet this. Okay, now let's go to the men's side. Here's the men's. Fabiana Corona in first place. He's a game ahead of Ray Robson. And, um... Ooh, Hans Neiman tied for 12. Is that right? I thought he moved up. This might be old. I thought he was doing slightly better than this. Yeah, I think he might be doing a little better than this. Says current standing, so hmm. Oh yes, four days ago. Four days ago. Duh. Why is it showing me stuff from four days ago? Sorry everybody, that's four days ago. I can't be current. Yeah, that's why I normally go to the um, St. Louis Chess Championships. St. Louis Chess Club. They usually have current info. <laughs> Hans Moki Neiman. I'm either going to lose or I'm going to win. There's no in between. So what, you don't want any draws? Sometimes a, sometimes a draw helps you. But I guess he's just saying he wants to win. If he loses, then so be it, you know? Nice, 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 some of the players. Okay, so here's the current standings as of October 15th. I'm making this video October 16th. Um, here they are. Jennifer Yu, she has seven, seven points. Arena Crush, six and a half. Alice Lee, six. This person, I can't say their name. I think they call call this lady Begum. 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 Yeah, I'm learning the names. Let's see what the deal is with Jennifer Yu, chess player. I was wondering how old she is. Let's see what it says. Okay, she's born. Oh, wow, she's only 20 years old. She became a woman grandmaster by Fide in 2018, and she's the 2019 U.S. Women's Chess Champion. Wow. Wow. That's great. That's really great. Uh, born in New York. Her parents must be very proud of her and her chess accomplishments. I think she's a student, too. Hmm. 
started playing chess in first grade. Started playing chess tournaments when she's seven. And she's almost 21 years old now, so she's been playing, you know, 14 years. Okay. Jennifer you. She's in first. She's very young. Um, I think that's the person we saw the photo of a minute ago. There she is. Jennifer Yu and Rochelle Wu answer. Oh, Jennifer Yu, Rochelle Wu, with the W, yeah. It's almost the same sounding names. Yeah, they're young. How old is Rochelle Wu? Rochelle Wu, USA Chess, H. Okay, so she must be 16, so she's a little younger than the other player, Jennifer Yu. Okay, that's her, Roche, yeah. Dang, 20600 in prize money. U.S. Girls Junior Championship, you can win money as chess players, wow. Huh. You really can win money playing chess. These kids can win it. Hmm. All right, children, boys and girls, get really good at chess. You can win money. You can make money and help your family, help yourself, help your family, you know? Okay. Let me close out some of this. Yeah, they're young. Okay, and this is Head of Christ by Warner Solomon, artist from Chicago. Uh, he was 76 years old when he passed. He was a Christian, so he's painting art. Painting art in heaven. Um, and I love this one of my favorite ones. He did this in 62. I love that. Wow. What an artist. Incredible. And he said he had a vision. He went to bed distraught because he couldn't in despair because he couldn't think of what to draw and he woke up and he painted it from having a vision. He had a vision of Jesus Christ. Beautiful. Incredible. He awoke in the early hours of the morning to see a vision of Christ which would serve as a prototype for the charcoal drawing. Prototype. You all know what a prototype is but um, Prototype, the first typical or preliminary model of something, especially a machine. Um, make a prototype or an early sample. Yeah. Okay. All right, let me close this out, close this out, close this out, close them all out. We got a lot of them. And Warner, uh, Warner Salman did the oil painting in 1940. Um, I wonder how much he made um, in terms of money to have so many millions of copies of it sold. He had a patron, Walter Marshall Cluett. I wonder who he was. Okay, he went to the School of uh, the Art Institute of Chicago. And he was born in Chicago, passed away in Chicago. Wow. So, you know, I always have this, like, tie-in with Chicago, everybody, because my dad was born in Chicago. Um, it's like, wow, he could have, he could have known my dad's dad, you know? He could have. Because my dad's dad was born in Chicago, too. The, you know, the family came, the... The ancestor before my dad's dad, he came over on the boat, I believe, to America from Germany. 
So my dad's dad would have been, I think this person would have been a few years younger, but they could have known each other. It's possible. You never know. They were immigrants from Finland and Sweden. Wow. Yeah, his parents were immigrants. He was born in April. That's usually spring, sometimes Easter time. I wonder what when Easter was in April 1892. April 1892, day of Easter. Wow, that's really special. This is um, this is important kind of to me because um, my son is born April seventeenth. Okay, and so this child that painted the picture of Jesus later in life, he was born approximately thirteen days after Easter. Um, and, um, yeah, my son, he's, I think he's only ever had one birthday where his birthday has been on Easter. You know, April 17th, his birthday was on an Easter, an Easter Sunday. So it's very interesting. If you have a birthday around March or April, to see if your birthday's ever on Easter Sunday. I, be I believe my birthday one time was on Easter Sunday. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to end the video here because... I think my husband's walking in, but um, hope you enjoyed the the um, chess and everything we've been talking about. And uh, we reviewed the game. I did some puzzles. Oh yeah, I was going to show you the men, how the where the where the men are doing. Um, where are the men on this? Is it a separate video? Is it a separate? Where's the men's standings? I don't know why they're just showing the women. Show the men too. Yeah, that's old data. Um, hmm. Wow. Huh. USA. Chess championships. Men standings. Hmm. Yeah, I know Chess Twenty Four has it usually. Is this a new one? Oh, yeah, that's a New York Times one. I saw that already. I'm going to focus on things going forward. I know Hans Niemann admitted cheating when he was under 18. And, you know, I like I said on a video, I think, I think if he wants to do the right thing, maybe he should, like, take a couple months off of chess, and, like, over the board or online. And then go to some kind of counseling, and um, and just try to get to the root of why he felt compulsed to to cheat online, even when he was young. You know, just to explore the topic in his mind with a therapist, with a counselor, um, and work through some of those issues. He could take like a journey class at a church. He could, you know, he could do some one-on-one -on -one counseling with someone. Um, you know, just about, you know, about it, get to the root of it, like, and I think it would help him for, for going forward, and, uh, he said he didn't do it over the board, only online, and, and, you know, he, he needs to get to the root of that, why he felt the need so badly to excel in advance, um, and fast track, you know, his success versus 
just playing and earning the rating points and, and, and waiting and waiting a little bit for it. And I'm just a beginner to chess, as you all know. I haven't even had two years of chess under my belt yet. But as a mom, as a grandma, as a person who's who's failed many times at many things and done you know, done some a lot of things good in my life and I've done some things bad in my life and, you know, I mean give the guy another chance and and if anyone out there is one of his handlers or people that advise him or mentor him or help him, you know, he could do a, a what's that, an admission, a, a non-admission of guilt and just say, look, I know I did some things to dis dishonor chess or, you know, my reputation and other players, so I'm doing a voluntarily, I'm taking three months off of the game. I'm taking three months off and I'm going to get mandatory counseling once a week with a therapist about, you know, what's going on, why I felt like I needed, you know, to explore these, these topics. Um, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe that's not good, but I know I went to a class at a church, um, and my mom even went to a class, um, when she was suffering with grief, and my, one of my sisters did as well when her son died, and my mom did when my, when my dad died, and it's not just for grief, it's for alcohol, alcoholism, drug addiction, anger, grief, shame, guilt, sin, you know, you name it, it's, you can talk about it in these, these journey type programs, um, it's like meetings, kind of like what alcoholics do, um, they go and they, you know, they say it's, it's, it's something that, you know, they don't have control over that they need God's help with, and, and they try to explore how they got to that point in their lives, why they felt compulsed to, to do these things, types of things, and there's no, you know, there's no shame in it. It's about getting healthy, about getting well, about recovering. So I, I really feel like if, 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 if people are going to constantly go after Hans Neiman every day of the week, I mean, he needs to sort of like, look, I need a couple months off to regroup, to get my mind right, to get to kind of make amends, to, you know, and he could also do some kind of like outreach too during those couple months. He could go to therapy and he could um, maybe work with some kids, you know, give some ch chess lessons to kids or something, you know, and uh, give back a little to the community and 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 whatnot, and um, and just uh, hopefully everyone will, you know, forgive him. He's young, you know, and I I think he he's sincere that he wants to move forward, and and he felt bad about what he did, and you know. I mean, I know he's not the only chess player that's cheated online. I'm pretty sure there's quite a few. <laughs> so, you know, let's not make him the scapegoat of it all. All right. Um, pairings and results. So this is, you know, I never went to this website, by the way. Um... Yeah, I did notice that the men are making more prize money than the women. I wasn't too happy about that, but I do know that the men are followed a lot more than the women. So, it is what it is. I think the prize money for the women is pretty good as well. Um, you can purchase tickets. Wow. 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 So the 19th is the last day. That would be fun. I wonder if the tickets could still be purchased. It's too bad. Maybe next year I'll be able to go. Oh, you could go to the closing ceremony, purchase tickets, cocktails, closing ceremony. Oh, $25 a person. That's cheap. That's pretty cheap, everybody. You could see the closing ceremony, maybe meet a couple people. Huh. It's not bad. If you're a chess fan, you know. Okay. It's not too bad. Okay, chess.com. 
it says the results. Let's go check it out on chess.com. Okay, this is pretty good. Um, I mean, have they seriously played 11 rounds already? Looks like it to me. How do I get? Okay, there it is. So round 10 was October 15th, was yesterday. So why is there something on round 11? Did they play today? understand this. I don't understand this because I didn't think they played this day. Or maybe this is just the day, day one, day, this is day 11. Because maybe you have a buy, you have a buy. So he probably had a buy this day. See the buys? These are like, like there's no match for him that day. How would he have no no matches on this day seven and day eight though? This this makes no sense to me. It just doesn't make much sense. So are you telling me that everybody had one day where they didn't play? Right? Like okay, so like Fabi doesn't play himself, right? And Ray doesn't play himself. And a wanderer doesn't play himself, so there's nothing there. But then every player gets two days off. They have two days where they don't play, every player. So it's pretty confusing, right? So, uh, there was only one single win on the 10th round, which was Saturday, and it was Hans Neiman winning. Okay. And Grandmaster Fabiana Corona and Ray Robson had draws, so they didn't have to play that day. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Very serious. So many young players. That's not a very flattering photo of him. You know, they could put a nicer looking photo, chess.com. I mean, why are you going to put one where he looks like, kind of like mean? <laughs> right? You know, you know these, uh, So Neiman's in 11th place with four and a half points, and w along with Wesley So. Looks like Wesley So to me. Yeah, Wesley So. Yeah, and Aronians in 12th. Christopher Yu. And whoever this is. Yep. Okay, going to end it here. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.